Hello and welcome to another patch spotlight video. And this one is going to be about the automatic overcharge. And I realized that I already mentioned it in the micro tutorial. And I also realized that this was implemented a while ago and not in a recent patch. But some people still seem to uh, struggle with it quite a lot. So I want to explain how to use it, when to use it, and a few extras for those who didn't know. So let's start with how to use it. You switch it on by right-clicking the overcharge button and you also switch it off by right-clicking the overcharge button. And whether it's on or not is something you can see by the small green circle that's inside the overcharge button. So when the circle is glowing, the overcharge is activated and when it's off, it's deactivated. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. There are some extra troubles with the code to make things super complicated but no worries, I'll make them easy. So if you want to have good automatic overcharge handling, you need to pay attention to power storages because power storages seem to interact with the overcharge in some way. And I'm not only talking about the first power storages you're building in any game, but also about every extra power storage you're adding. The advice I'm giving you is to always, when the overcharge has been switched on and you build a power storage to re-toggle the overcharge, right? You switch it off, you switch it back on after building a power storage. This is going to guarantee that you don't run into the situation where after building a power storage, the UI suggests that the overcharge is switched on, but it's not firing as it would. Retoggling it is fixing that. And the second observation is that upgrades interact with overcharge. So let's say I get this upgrade and automatic overcharge had been switched on before. After the upgrade, it will still look like it's switched on, but the truth is it is switched off. So I have to retoggle it again because the overcharge is still going to think that the ACU is upgrading. I don't think there is any marker in the code for the overcharge to notice that the upgrade is finished. So the only way to reset it and make it work properly again is by retoggling it. And lastly, I have run into some situations where power storages and upgrades had nothing to do with whether the automatic overcharge worked or not. In some really rare random cases or cases that happen for reasons we don't know yet, the automatic overcharge looks like it's switched on, but it deactivates. And if you run into these very rare, very unlucky situations, you just have to notice by observing and retoggle it again. So it's going to work again. So this is what you need to know about the handling but you don't know yet what the actual difference between manual overcharge and automatic overcharge is in practice, and you don't know when to use which. So let's explain this very fast. What you need to know for the difference is not simply that you can aim the manual overcharge more reliably than the automatic overcharge, that much should be obvious, but a very notable difference that is going to add into the cost-benefit consideration is that the automatic overcharge fires at a faster rate than the manual overcharge. And the reason is that this game has 500 milliseconds inbuilt lag. So maybe you have played other real-time strategy, strategy games before, such as Age of Empires, for example. And in Age of Empires, the ping is going to have a direct impact on how much the game is lagging. Let's say you have two people living close together playing Age of Empires, they have a ping of 30, and the game feels very fast. Now, you have somebody from Singapore and somebody from France and they are playing together and their ping is 400 milliseconds. And for the Age of Empire player, this is going to feel quite slow. That's because they don't have inbuilt lag. But Forge Alliance has 500 milliseconds inbuilt lag and that's why we don't notice any ping problems until the pings are 500 milliseconds or higher. These are the only situations when FAF players notice that the game is lagging. 
So I do realize that sometimes people living far away are going to cause ping. But most of the time, the 500 milliseconds in build lag are enough to make up for most of the sluggishness. So the developers of Forged Alliance thought we can simply remove the problem of ping by making the game lag by default and having players get used to the slowness of the game. And this is why when there is ping that is under 500 milliseconds, it doesn't feel any slower to us than it actually is. But this very smart solution has one problem, and this is the automatic overcharge and manual overcharge interaction. So the manual overcharge should be firing at three seconds, 3.3 seconds, that is, right? That's the usual fire cycle. You get 12,000 damage every 3.3 seconds. That's how it's said in the database. And I'm telling you, the automatic overcharge is actually pulling that off. Because you don't have this button that needs to glow in order to fire it. And the 500 milliseconds that need to pass before you can give the command do not apply to automatic overcharge. But for manual overcharge, you have to wait until this button is clickable again and the game is going to require another 500 milliseconds to fire your overcharge. And if you take into account that there is going to be some reaction time, let's assume a very low 50 milliseconds, we are going to add up with a fire cycle for the manual overcharge that is 550 milliseconds slower than the usual automatic overcharge. Right? And that gives us a very nice comparison. The DPS of the automatic overcharge using this calculation is going to be 3636. And the DPS of the manual overcharge using this calculation is going to be 3116. And that's a difference of 15%. So you're going to sacrifice 15% damage output when you use manual overcharge instead of automatic overcharge. And intuitively, you would say that whenever you have multiple units close together and the automatic overcharge is not going to hit the group, but maybe just the corner one and the other ones don't die, then using manual overcharge is better. So in a situation like this, where you have units of the same tech level close to each other, using manual overcharge may be better, simply to minimize the amount of area of effect damage wasted, so that the actual DPS of the overcharge applies to as many units as possible at the same time. So this is a situation where you would use manual overcharge. But I have two more situations for you, and in both of these situations I would recommend you to use automatic overcharge instead of manual overcharge. The first situation is, okay, let's start with this one because this is easy. You just have one high value target and nothing else is inside the range of the ACU gun. Then you would always use automatic overcharge because you're not going to waste extra time on the slower fire cycle for the manual overcharge. Automatic overcharge is simply going to be better here. If you fight against experimenters, for example. And this 15% damage output difference in between the automatic and the manual overcharge can decide life or death in a game when you have ACU versus experimental situations, right? You have died to these before and it had been close before, right? You know these. And now we have this mixed case where we have some higher tech units and some lower tech units close together in one group. And here I'd recommend you to also use the automatic overcharge because the automatic overcharge is smart enough to always automatically prioritize the highest tech level targets in the group. So unless the low tech tanks are in front of the high tech tanks, the high tech tanks are always going to be shot. And if everything is in the range of the gun, the ACU will prioritize the higher tech tanks. So the worst that can happen is that a striker travels in front of a pillar and the very first overcharge is going to be wasted on the striker instead of it's waiting for the pillar, right? You can imagine that. 
but that's usually not too important and it is better to have the automatic overcharge hit the higher tech level units at a faster rate. Also watching out for bunched up units with a manual overcharge such as four strikers together or like one striker and one pillar together is not as important as quickly killing off the pillars in this mix. Right? And this applies to any combination of high tech and low tech units. So when you encounter this, always use automatic overcharge. Now what happens in this situation? We have one striker and one chicken for example. And the striker is just a little bit in front of the chicken. Well then, you would use the automatic overcharge and you would give an attack order on the chicken so that the ACU should ignore the striker. The ACU will still fire at the striker, but it will not waste the overcharge. And that's how you should do it. So I hope you understood the damage difference between the automatic and the manual overcharge. You hopefully understood that it's quite notable and you should know when to use which and how to handle the automatic overcharge without being prone to the bugs of the code. So I hope this is going to help you in future games and good luck, have fun.